Hello, welcome to part two of looking at polynomial functions and their graphs. Now, in the last video, we had introduced that polynomial graphs are smooth and continuous. Smooth, continuous, yes. Sharp turns, gaps in the graph, no, not a polynomial graph. We also talked about the importance of a polynomial definition where we look at leading terms, and that was the focus of the last video. In this video, uh, we're going to extend the under our understanding of leading terms by looking at what happens through the algebra. In other words, how can we prove that the leading term really shows you what's happening in a polynomial? We said in the last video, if you have an odd degree polynomial, the end behaviors will look very similar to a cubic polynomial with a positive coefficient. With a negative coefficient, the end behavior looks like um, an x cubed with a negative coefficient. And when the degree is even, it looks kind of like the end behavior of a parabola with a positive coefficient and negative coefficient. And we can, you know, we can see that with examples. You can model this, let's say, on Desmos. So you could say, all right, well, I want to look at, here's x cubed, right? That's the cubic function. And what we're saying is that for any polynomial function, it doesn't matter uh, what the degree is. If it's odd, they'll have the same end behavior. So in Desmos, we could say y equals x to the a. And I don't want to make a a slider. I want to make a a list. Let's make a a list of odd numbers. Let's, let's do a bunch. Let's go 1, 3, and let's go up to 999. Boom. Nope. It, 50 elements. Okay, so there it is. So you can see this group of polynomial functions. And then what this is doing is it's grabbing y equals x to the first, third, fifth, all the way up to 999. Um, and it's doing all those examples. And you can see here that regardless of how the shape is changing, their end behavior is the same. As x goes positive, so does y. As x approaches positive infinity, so does y. As x approaches negative infinity, so does y. Okay, that's a good example for 500, but how do we do it for all of them? Well, what we can show in the algebra is we can show that the polynomial functions will exhibit the same behavior as a function with just the leading term. What am I talking about? So I'm talking about um, proving end behavior, proving end behavior algebraically. End behavior algebraically. Now we're still going to look at this from a case by case basis. We're not we're not going to look at all odd polynomials at once. We're just going to look at, for example, how would you prove, let's say, the polynomial p of x equals negative 4x to the fifth minus 5x to the third plus 2x. How can we prove that the same end behavior as another function q of x that's just the lead term? So that is just negative 4 times um, x to the fifth. And the key here is that these two polynomials have the same degree, but nothing else is the same and the same uh, coefficient. It's, it's, I could leave this leading coefficient just as negative or positive, but I'm gonna have the leading coefficient match as well. So how do we prove this? Well, first of all, let's establish what this polynomial is doing. So right here, we see that the leading term is this one, and it tells us the degree is five. That's, that's our exponent, degree is five. And the coefficient, the, the nth coefficient, is less than zero. So what we expect is, what we expect, thinking of a cubic function, right, end behavior like this, that's when it's positive, and, but here the coefficient is negative, so I should have drawn it like this. This would be something, I don't really know what happens in the middle, but dots there, but my end behavior looks something like that. It's badly drawn, it's not symmetrical. I'm just doing a quick sketch for myself where I see, okay, this is what our end behavior should look like. And that just means as x approaches positive infinity, y approaches negative infinity. And over here, as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches positive infinity. That's our end behavior. Let's prove that this function will do the same thing. So one way to do that is to show algebraically that p of x really is q of x. Those are the same things. So we can do that by saying p of x, we want to factor out the leading term. This will be the, the trick that does it. By factoring out the leading term, we divide each thing by negative 4x to the fifth. So negative 4x to the fifth divided by itself is 1 minus 5x to the third over negative 4x to the fifth 
plus 2x divided by negative 4x to the fifth. And what do we have here? Well, let's just work out some of the algebra. We've got coefficient negative 4x to the fifth times 1. This is a positive ratio because we're subtracting the quotient of two negative numbers. And 5 over 4, we can't reduce that. But x to the third over x to the fifth, we subtract those exponents and we get 5 times x to the negative second over 4. Right? We subtract the exponents. And over here, this is going to be actually a negative ratio. Right? 2 over negative 4, we're adding that. That's a negative number. So that's negative 1 half, 1 half. And then x to the first divided by x to the fifth, we subtract the exponents. We get x to the negative fourth. All right, so now, so now what do we have? Well, same factor in the front, times 1 plus this. This really is x, uh, 1 over x squared. That's what this is right here. It's 1 over x squared, and this is 1 over x to the fourth. So that means 5 over 4 times 1 over x squared is 5 over 4 times x squared, and this is going to be um, minus 1 over 2x to the fourth, and that's where it gets interesting. Because at this step right here, look at this. What's going to happen to these two terms as x gets really, really, really big? Think about that. What's going to happen to them? Think about what will happen to this one as well. Well, as x approaches infinity, as x approaches, let's say, positive or negative infinity, this value is going to get really big. This will get really large. And I, I guess I could have said, well, if it's approaching positive infinity, actually, it would be approaching, as x approaches positive infinity, y approaches negative infinity. Let me just write that out. out. As x approaches positive infinity, since it's negative 4 times whatever your, whatever number x is to the fifth power, y is going to approach negative infinity, and as x approaches negative infinity, negative infinity to the fifth, or uh, negative numbers to the fifth power are going to be negative. Times a negative 4 is a positive, so y will approach positive infinity. And if you look at this, this right here is the end behavior of this function, right? As x approaches positive infinity, y approaches negative. But as x approaches negative, y approaches positive. And that is describing the end behavior. So we're seeing here that the leading term describes the end behavior of your polynomial function. But what about all this stuff in here? Well, the 1 is just a 1. It's not going to change. But these, right? As x approaches positive or negative infinity, here in this case it's 4 times a really big positive number squared or a really big negative number squared, that's going to be approaching 0 from the positives. So as x approaches positive or negative infinity, it doesn't matter what direction you go in, your your outputs, right, the, the outputs of this, this approaches zero. It approaches zero because you're dividing by bigger and bigger numbers. So it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And even if it was, in this case it's squared and this is to the fourth, it's going to happen here as well. That'll keep it positive in the numerator, but even if it was negative, you're approaching negative, you're approaching zero, but from the negative side, right? You're getting smaller and smaller and smaller towards zero. So these approach zero. So what we say is that as x approaches positive or negative infinity, these terms approach zero, and what you basically have is this: negative four x to the fifth times one plus zero minus zero. And that's just negative 4x to the fifth times 1 or itself. So this has the same, be same behavior as x gets really big in a positive, towards positive infinity or negative infinity as q of x. They have the same end behavior. And that's the kind of proof we're trying out here. Now, we haven't talked too much about how to prove that this approach is 0, what the concept is. But just intuitively, we're dividing our numbers into smaller and smaller parts. So the two-step process is to fact out your leading coefficient and then try to identify which, which parts, which terms are approaching zero, and we'll talk more about that. Thanks.